This is one of the most functional 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries I've ever tested. Mostly because of this cool thing. You've got all kinds of cool ports and uh, functionality while still functioning as a standard 12 volt battery. Let me show you what this can do. How long can this stop to prepare 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery power a full size kitchen refrigerator for? This is my main kitchen fridge, so we're getting in and out of it all the time, putting stuff in, taking stuff out, so this is a really good test for the real world. What I've done to uh, set this up is we've got uh, the fridge cord coming over here. It's plugging into this power station. The reason I have this power station in between the battery and the fridge is two reasons. One, I need an inverter, and this uh, has one that will easily power the fridge. And two, sometimes I'm busy and uh, can't be right here at all times as this battery is discharging. So if it dies and uh, I'm away or uh, not close, this will still see it through um, for a couple more hours even after that battery has died. We're also gonna do a capacity test. I've got the Victron Smart Shunt right there. And uh, so as this powers the fridge, it will run the power through that shunt. We'll be able to measure how much power comes out of it. And as you can see here, I've zeroed everything out on the shunt app. So that way we can see what the results are. It is 3.20 p.m. We will just let this run and we'll see how much time this battery gives us on the fridge. This Dr. Prepare battery has officially died. I wasn't here when it uh, shut off. You can see here that the Victron Smart Shunt recorded 99 amp hours. This is a very slow test, much lower than 0.2C rate. I need to be sure and mention that. And so it's normal to get slightly under what you would get with a 0.2C rate. But to the fact that this was 99, uh, I call that a pass. Uh, it did a fantastic job. Notice the time, 11.35. I missed it by about uh, two hours. So this Dr. Prepare battery ran my full-size kitchen fridge for about 15 hours. This inverter is incredibly heavy, so we're gonna use extension cords for this next test. Can this Dr. Prepare battery power follow the cord? a 120 volt mini split heat pump. Here it goes. This barely started up. Uh, it will ramp all the way down to just 200 watts after it uh, gets going for a little while. So you can easily get three, four hours uh, worth of runtime on this from a single battery. And this Dr. Prepare 100 amp hour 12 volt battery power an electric hot plate. Certainly this inverter can, so usually we'll trip the overcurrent protection device in these batteries. Some trip faster, some trip longer, but uh, anyway, let's, let's just kind of see. So far so good, and it just turned off. So that's very good. Uh, that uh, means that this battery has overcurrent protection. It trips pretty darn quick. Let's see if it uh, automatically resets. Some batteries automatically reset, others you have to encourage them to reset. <laughs> okay, let's try pushing this button up here, see if we can reset it. I don't think uh, the BMS uh, is officially shut down, so I think we've got to get a uh, charge uh, put on this. just want to try a quick experiment here. Uh, we overloaded this Dr. Preparer battery and it went into overcurrent protection, which is great. Terminals on this battery are dead. I want to just see for fun if it can get woken up by using this uh, module or if you've got to use an official source that uh, you normally would use to wake up uh, a BMS on a battery. So let's put this on. And let's see if it powers on. Makes sense. If the battery is shut down, that connection point should be shut down as well. And nothing's happening. Let's just try plugging it in. Got this power station here that uh, has a bi directional 100 watt uh, USB C power delivery. Nope. Oh, it's going out. We've got lights on now. Let's see if the inverter turns on. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you can wake the battery up, BMS, with a USB-C power delivery. Can this Dr. Prepare 12 volt 100 amp hour battery 
run a full-size vacuum cleaner? Let's find out. Started it. There we go, cut out, which is what I expected it to do. That's actually very good from the standpoint that the overcurrent protection device works very quickly. So you saw that it had enough surge to start the vacuum, but uh, an extended uh, period of runtime, no. And this Dr. Prepare 100 amp hour 12 volt battery run. Follow the yellow cord. A high-end gaming desktop slash workstation. We've got three 4K monitors. 32 inch wide each and uh, we've got a gaming benchmark running here to push the computer as hard as possible. We've got uh, this awesome UPS from uh, Golden Mate. Uh, I've made a video about this. Love this thing. Be sure and check that out. Notice that the outlets are empty. Just got the power coming into this UPS and then the inverter from that uh, Dr. Prepare battery is plugged into that. As you can see we are pulling just about 600 watts, 500. So yeah, the Dr. Prepare battery can run a PC piece of cake. Another one of everyone's favorite tests. Can the Dr. Prepare 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery power? Come in here, a batch of wash. Wet clothes in the dryer. Got a load of dirty clothes in the washer. Usually the dryer is the hardest one for it to start and that's the surge to get the drum spinning. This is a gas dryer, 120 volt power. You can see both machines plugged in here. The 240 volt plug where the electric dryer would plug into is there. Obviously an electric dryer would not work. And then you can see over here that uh, the 120 volt outlet is empty because it's all plugged into this plug strip at the moment. Let's see if it can do it. If it can start this, it usually can do the washer. Three, two, one. Ooh, it struggled, but uh, it did it. Nice. Let's do the wash next. We're on the spin cycle here, full speed. And uh, as you can see, both machines are running just fine. All being powered off. The Dr. Prepare battery. Can this Dr. Prepare battery run? Follow the cord. A microwave. And yes, it's in my garage. Uh, I don't use it for cooking in my kitchen, uh, but I keep it out here uh, for testing. All for you guys. Based on past tests that uh, this will start the microwave and then the overcurrent protection uh, will kick in because this microwave will pull over 1800 watts AC. But let's give it a shot. Three, two, one. There we go. So it can start a microwave, but it can't run it uh, for an extended period of time on its own. If you parried another battery with it, of course it would be able to run it. Can this doctor prepare 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery power? Follow the yellow cord. A full size gas furnace. We're gonna input the power here through this easy generator switch. Highly recommend uh, these for anyone that has a gas fired furnace. All right, the fan is up to speed and it's running this furnace piece of cake. All right, one of the unique features of this uh, battery is this little pub right here that uh, produces power and allows us to run 12 volt appliances directly off of it. So what we've got here is a Bodega 12 volt compressor fridge. Currently, I have it plugged into the wall right here uh, because I've cooled it off down to zero degrees. We're in max mode. And uh, what we're going to do is switch this over now to this Dr. Prepare battery. We're going to time with the time lapse how long that battery can run this cooler for. Incidentally, I've got this power station down here and that's just providing USB power to the stopwatch and our time lapse camera. Okay, module on. We've got the 12 volt uh, plug for the cooler. and we're gonna leave it on max mode. This is kind of a worst case scenario with this cooler. It's at zero degrees and I have no food in it. It's just an empty cooler. So it's uh, not gonna have very much thermal mass or anything in it. So this uh, is kind of a worst case runtime scenario. We are in the mid 70s, 75.6. Uh, test 
finally ended. And I'm saying finally because, wow, it took a while. This battery really ran this for a while. As you saw it in the time lapse, it ran this cooler just shy of 55 hours. That uh, has been in mild 70, low 70 degree uh, temperatures. And then just so you can see here, uh, it was empty, and there was no thermal mass or anything, and uh, it was set to zero degrees Fahrenheit. Aha! Uh -huh. There's some convenient uh, screws along here. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Here's the BMS, obviously. We've got three 10 gauge cables right over here. And then on the positive side, we've got three 10 gauge cables. This smaller one here and this smaller black one over here go to the little Anderson uh, port uh, where the hub connects in. And then I can't get uh, the cell pack out. Uh, it seems to be glued in and what have you. I did uh, tear this uh, piece of paper away here. I don't know if you can see, but can you see they're cylindrical cells. There's only two other batteries that I'm aware of that uh, have cylindrical cells like this. Battleborn and the Golden Mate Orion 1000. And uh, now this Dr. Prepare uh, has that. I love seeing the cylindrical cells. They they can weigh a little bit more, especially compared to something, you know, like a pouch cell or something like that. I think they're quite a bit uh, safer when it comes to if one gets punctured uh, or whatnot. So anyway, I'm happy to see cylindrical cells in this pack. All right, into the freezer goes. It's a very frosty battery, it's been in the freezer overnight and then some. And uh, what we're gonna do is test uh, low temperature charging protection. It appears that the BMS is shut off completely. The operating temperature even in discharging is only 14 degrees. In my deep freezer, we're well below zero. I think that uh, the BMS may have just completely shut down uh, for charging and discharging because I, I have nothing and my shunt is connected up to the terminals. Now we the charge indicator lights still work. So anyway, let's see what uh, let's see what happens here. You can see it goes into charge mode and then it kicks off. Charge it kicks off. Charge and kicks off. So yeah, this uh, BMS has locked this battery off big time. No charge, no discharge. So I would say the low temperature charging protection definitely works. It also has low temperature discharge protection. <laughs> uh, let's let this uh, sit here for a while and uh, warm up and uh, we'll make sure that uh, it will uh, discharge and accept a charge once it's had a chance to warm up. Let it warm back up and uh, we already have good signs. The uh, BMS is back on and powering the shunt. You can see that uh, right here. Battery's not at 100% uh, state of charge. I haven't calibrated the shunt just because this is very temporary in nature for testing. But uh, let's see if it uh, takes a charge. This time the light immediately turned on. And uh, you can see at the moment, uh, we're pushing 13 watts. It has uh, low temperature charging protection and uh, it comes back to life uh, even when it's been very deeply frozen. <laughs> We've got two boxes to open this time. We've got some literature. Got uh, a bunch of screws. Uh, what appears to be two mounting plates. It's a hefty little battery, 12.8 volts, 100 amp hours, 1,280 watt hours, charging voltage of 14.6 volts, max discharge current of 100 amps, max charging current 50 amps, 32 to 122 degrees, and you can do up to uh, four pieces in series or four in parallel. Nice to have those specs right there, easy to read. I like the two carrying straps, that's nice. This battery seems to weigh a little more than others I've uh, played around with, so it's nice to have uh, these double carrying straps, especially because this one is designed to be kind of toted around and used as kind of a portable power station, which we're gonna look at here momentarily. And we've got a nice little indicator light up there that uh, tells us the state of charge. And right here, we've got this little cover, pops off, we've got an Anderson connector right there, which is nice. 
And then it's got this little uh, casement right here, so this thing can just flip around and uh, tuck in right there. So here's the hub. There's the little Anderson connector. What's labeled as a solar in. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. And if we open that up, you've got another Anderson port for the solar input. Next one is USB out. And we've got a type A and a type C port. We'll see what the rating is on those. Then we've got USB C in and out. That's cool. So you can actually do bi directional. USB-C charging. They've got the DC 12 volt out, which is an Anderson connector again. Probably gonna be a little hard for you guys to read this. The max solar input is 11 to 25 volts, DC 4.2 amps max. So the USB type A port is a 18 watt quick charge port. The single, the USB-C output only is a 30 watt max. And then the bi-directional USB-C is a 100 watt power delivery port. The Anderson output can do 12 volts, 10 amps. We've got some documentation here. So we've got uh, an adapter that goes Anderson to the standard cigarette style lighter plug. Try uh, connecting this hub quick. And then we should be able to push this power on. There we go. I figured out what these uh, pieces of hardware are used for. It's very cool. This uh, battery has these screw holes down here on the bottom and uh, you're very easily able to put this piece of metal in like this and uh, you secure it uh, with the very short screws. And then these two ports, as you can see, these two holes, these two holes, that one and the one down here, are left accessible and then you can screw it down to the ground uh, or to a shelf or whatever. But uh, anyway, that's designed for bumpy applications like in an RV or something like that. Uh, you can actually screw this battery down and secure it to the ground. And that's a pretty nice touch. I've never seen a battery include that before. And that could be very helpful to a lot of you. We've got a power station here that, that will give us a wattage reading and a power delivery port that's rated for 100 watts. So we're going to just try plugging that in to the bi-directional USB-C power delivery port on this and uh, see if we can put a charge into this battery. It's pulling 84 watts. And uh, we've got a green light next to the power light. So I assume that means it's charging. And we can see on the state of charge indicator, the second to full light is blinking. Different power station here. This has a bi-directional 100 watt USB-C power delivery port. And I'm curious to see if it pushes power or if it tries to pull power. Because both of these are bi-directional. So what gets to pick? This one might push it just because it's at a 100% state of charge. Let's try it. Uh, yes, it is outputting power and around the 87-ish watt range. So it looks like this uh, USB-C charger does not, at least when it's charging, does not pull a full 100 watts. Okay, we've discharged this power station down a little bit. I've disconnected it. It's still in the bi-directional USB-C. Let's just try plugging it in. See if it pulls or pushes power. Looks like the power station is pushing power into the battery. So now let's disconnect this. Stop charging. And now let's plug it into the type C out only. That's only 30 watts supposedly. Let's see if, oh, yep. And we get a charge, 23 watts, 24 watts going in. And let's just try the 12 volt out. Looks like it's uh, stopping about 90 watts, uh, but that might just be because it's close to full. All right, well, I think uh, Dr. Prepared kind of knocked this one out of the park in terms of functionality. 
I absolutely love the idea of adding something so simple and straightforward as this little hub to make a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery so much more functional. I love this. So if you're just someone that needs, you know, just some really nice DC outputs, why spend extra money on, you know, a full blown power station when you can get something that exceeds uh, most of their capacities? and uh, get all the functionality that uh, you need. I love to see that kind of innovation. Recessing the terminals down below here a little bit uh, so that you can put things up on top of this, uh, but uh, the terminals are not squished at all. Love to see that. And uh, the fact that, uh, as you saw in the unboxing, the brackets that they can screw to the bottom of this and then screw down into the floor. I just love seeing the uh, thought and consideration about that kind of thing. Granted, we have this uh, little uh, battery monitor here, which is definitely better than nothing. In my heart of hearts, the only thing that would make this all the better is if there was an actual shunt and a display that uh, showed, you know, like a percentage and maybe, you know, how many watts are going in and out. I just love seeing that kind of information. Stick with the basic lights, but maybe throw a Bluetooth module or something in there with a simple app. Also guys, don't forget to check out my spreadsheet where I have a written comparison and a grading system for all the 12 volt batteries that I've tested so far. It's a great way to see all the data all in one spot. I'll leave a link for it uh, down below in the description as well as in a pinned comment uh, so you guys can uh, check this out. And then please don't forget to give us that like, consider subscribing, and then also please leave comments. I love hearing from all of you. You all have such great uh, things to share and contribute. It's very valuable to me. So don't forget to, to leave a comment as well. We'll catch y'all next time.